Hello, this is Wisdom Hunter, and we're going to continue with this series on solo D&D RPG on Roll20. So yeah, if you want to, you need to play D&D, and you don't have anybody else to play with, you're going to do a solo type game where it's just you. So in these first videos, I'm just showing you how I set this up, and then later videos, we'll go actually through some games and have some fun and see how it all comes together. But right now, the topic for this video is creating a place where people live. So if you're exploring across the country, across the countryside, and you have empty spaces in between towns, these bigger towns, and you want to find out kind of what's in those places, where do people live, what are the conditions that they're living in, I'm going to show you some macros on Roll20 that you can use to quickly build and flesh out a settlement, a city, a village, a hamlet, even an encampment, or even a caravan. So I'm going to show you the macros that I use to do this to quickly figure out some place that the characters, the PCs can actually travel through and maybe there's a story there. And this is all part of solo role playing where you have to create things on the fly. And Roll20 is great for this. With certain macros, you can quickly create all kinds of things and create new stories and new adventures and then you go with it. That's the solo role play style. Okay, let's go to Roll20, show you the macros. Okay, here we are in Roll20, and you're going to see over here all these macros that I have set up. And they're going to start with City Start. When you actually want to create something, a, a settlement where people are living, click on City Start and start from there. And then there's going to be a one for City Plot, one for each and every type of settlement. City City, City Commune, City Hamlet, Large Camp Caravan, all the way down to a city village. They're in alphabetical order. So each one has a different size. That's what it's going to come down to, but it will be able to define those things when we get there. So let's just start and look at the city start macro. So here you'll see the city start macro. Go ahead and pause the video. You can copy it, whatever you want to do. But you're going to see two roll on tables, two rollable tables in this city type and population level. And when you roll this, this macro here, it's going to give you a city type. The city type will be anything from commune, hamlet, village, town. You'll see the whole list here, all the way down to small group camped. And each one has a different possibility of occurring. For example, the city is a weight of two. And village, a village has a weight of six. Villages are more common than cities. And a work crew. Let's say you just want to meet up with a work crew. So there's a weight of two. There's a possibility of that. Slavers camp, they're not that many, so this is giving a weight of one, right? So you can you can choose a weight for each one of these city types. So that's your rollable table on city types. And then you got population level. And this is just going to be straight deserted. Deserted has a weight of one. Average has a weight of eight. So it's more likely you're going to get an average population size for whatever it is, because of the weight is eight. It's a lot more than deserted. Overcrowded has a weight of one. So you can see this kind of a bell curve where overcrowded at one end and deserted at the other end of the spectrum have a weight of one and they go up to eight. So you can create like this bell curve of weights for the population level because it's most likely that it's going to be average. Just so we can get this in, eventually we're going to click on the city plot. And the city plot is where you're going to get some ideas on what's going on in that settlement. And so there are many city plots. Infestation, monastery forming, criminal hideout, traveler's repose, house fire, circus, fertile ground, irrigated, towering, shadow inside city. Shadow inside city which just means that there's an evil presence inside the city. And then it's going to take the oracle that I use, that advanced oracle that I use in my games in Roll20, to flesh out what that shadow presence is in the city. So these are some city plots. All in all, there are 100 city plots that I have in here. So let's get started. Create a city. So here we are. We're going to start with the city start macro. Just push on the test. Let's see what we got. It's a commune with a sparse population. 
So now we write that down, whatever you want to do, you say a commune with a sparse population. So this is a commune is actually a pretty small settlement and it's already sparse. So there's not going to be many things going on here, but now we're going to roll on the specific city type and the, and the city plot to describe the city. And if we need to use the Oracle to determine any unknown details, we will. Okay. So let's go roll on city type and city plot. First city type which is a city commune. So here you can see a basic macro set up for a commune. It's going to be a population. The population density is deserted. You'll see here that the population density deserted, it will roll a 1d4 minus one. So that would be on the average one or two people in the commune if it was deserted. Sparse would be a 2d3, right? And the low would be 2d3 plus 3, average 2d6 plus 4, high 3d6 plus 5. So the population is growing depending on what that population level roll was in the previous roll. And so then again, you get the number of structures, 2d3, and there's one storage structure. So this is all based upon describing that size of a commune. So let's go ahead and test the macro. Okay, so what was the population density? We come back here, the population density was sparse. So we'll click on sparse, submit it. And so there's four people. There's a population of four people in this commune. The number of structures is four with one storage structure. So this is a very small settlement of people. Now let's go to the next role, which is going to be the Z-plot, city Z-plot. Here you can see the macro for it. So we're going to roll on the plot table that I showed you before with 100 plots. We're going to roll on that four times. And there's also a mood to the town, which is another rollable table. Let me show you that to you real fast. So here's the rollable table for the mood in the town. And if anything from hostile all the way up to helpful. Hostile would be a weight of one. Indifferent would be a weight of eight. So indifferent is sort of the average. You walk into a town, people really don't care if you're there or not. But you go, you'll get this range of moods in the town to your presence. Whether they'll be hostile towards you, engaging with you, helpful, friendly, unfriendly, or avoidant. They're going to try to avoid you. So now we're going to click on the plot macro and see what we get. Let's go check it out. So they're unfriendly. There's four people in this population of a commune with four buildings, four structures. Let's say they could be tents, whatever and they're in an unfriendly mood. And you've got plot number one is these are raider bandit attacks. Now are these raiders and bandits that live there? Are they being attacked by raiders and bandits? Do they think you are the raiders and bandits coming in to further attack on them? Or you could go with a corrupted leader or preparing for battle or they have high taxes. You choose what plot makes more sense for you in that moment. We could say in this moment that the most likely scenario for a small commune like this that is unfriendly is raider attacks and bandit attacks. So at this point in time, if you need to know a little bit more about these bandit attacks and what's going on, you can just come over to the Oracle. I'll show you the Oracle macro again. Here it is. You can write it down, pause the video, look at it. So here we go. So this town is unfriendly because of raider attacks. Let's ask a yes, no question about these attacks. Do the people in this commune actually do the attacks? So let's say, are the people, are the four people in this commune, in this small group of people, are they the raiders that are doing attacks? Yes or no? We don't really know, so it's going to be neither yes or no. And so we'll set the DC at, at nine, because it's just, we're, just, we're just going to leave it as a 50 50 chance that these are the raiders. So let's submit that. Go see what the answer is. And the answer is, it seems unlikely that they are the Raiders, but somehow in Shrine Reflect Tunnel Metal. So it seems unlikely that the people in this commune are the actual Raiders, but somehow there's a tunnel maybe that is allowing certain Raiders to come in and out. Maybe they're connected with the Raiders and then maybe they're hiding the hideout for the Raiders. Let's ask that. Maybe there's a tunnel that the raiders are actually hiding in, and this group of four is actually trying to protect them. So they seem, they're, they're unfriendly. They don't want to be too friendly, but they don't want to be too hostile either. So let's ask the oracle a question again. 
are, is this commune hiding the bandits? And we're going to say yes and give it a fairly high DC of 7. So the, a roll of D8 would have to beat a 7. So let's see what happens. Yes. So the, these, this group of four people in the commune are actually hiding out bandits that are hiding in a tunnel somewhere nearby. Yes. Even though somehow, let's see, our possible answers here are aggravate, chain, stalker, parade. So yes, the people in this commune are hiding some bandits in, in a tunnel some, somewhere. But even though somehow they are being stalked and the situation is being aggravated. So, okay, we can kind of sense right now that we're going to walk into this town. Four people, these four little structures, not many people, but they are hiding a larger hideout of bandits back in a tunnel. Okay, see how quickly we kind of developed a city right there? Okay, so that gives you an idea of how you can create cities on the fly really fast. With, within just a minute or two, we created this little commune of four people who were hiding bandits off in a tunnel somewhere. And so now when the PCs walk into this little commune, something might happen if they ask the wrong question or something slips out, or maybe they perceive something and they start to ask questions, maybe trouble will brew. Or maybe this is where they need to go, and maybe this is where the bandits are that they're trying to find out. These are all clues to how the game develops in solo role-playing. You go with these clues, you go with it, your PCs go into the commune and see what develops. That gives you an idea of how you can quickly create a city or a settlement on the fly. Okay, this is Wisdom Hunter, and remember, the person who enjoys the game the most wins.